Hey, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. This is Sugar Ray Songs in Order. My name is Murphy Cargis, and this is... Hey, everybody. It's Stan Frazier. Hello, people in the World Wide Web. I'm super stoked that uh, he stopped by to do When It's Over, um, a hit we had on the self-titled record, the fourth album. And uh, it's just going to be fun to talk about it. I talk about everyone so far, and you've mentioned some cool things like you should have a guest on, and, um, you know, I love the comments, so... So we're doing it. So I wanted to talk about it because this song actually was written, it was coming off of the 1459, it was the next single, and I know there was like some pressure for us to like keep it going so we can just kind of jump into like where were we? You know? It's such a funny place we were, Murph, because uh, you know, we were coming off three really big songs, like you know, number one song, Fly, you know, then we had um, <clears throat> Every Morning, and then we had Someday, so you know, there was no pressure at all, right? And That's we didn't like, expect those hits, too. Like, it, as you've seen in these videos, like, Fly was it like a weird, it was written in a weird way. And then the other ones came and we were grateful. But this was like a different record because now it was almost like you got to keep it going when it wasn't expected before. All right. And so coming off of those three, you know, big hits, <clears throat> you know, I was lucky because, you know, I had the gift of uh, writing a lot of the hooks and melodies and lyrics for the choruses on all those songs. And so... When um, I look back at this, it's kind of funny, the uh, the gen genesis of, of these songs. So Fly was kind of like when I had my girlfriend. And then, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Every Morning was kind of like when I was losing the girlfriend. Because it was like, oh, shoot, I think she, was che she thought I was cheating on her, which I wasn't. And then when it's over, that bitch had just left, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> that was that, right? Um, so Gone it, out the window. Yeah, it, it, everything I had known had, had gone out the window. I thought, like, it, this was going to be it. But um, as you know, relationships sometimes fall apart. So the, uh, the the thing that with this song, you know, we'll get into it a little bit. But, um, you know, Rodney was messing around with that riff, you know. That kind of thing. And yep. he, he kind of had a beat to it. I think Homicide put some beat to it. So I got maybe some kind of, like, recording of it, uh, maybe a CD or something. And I was uh, went back up to LA, and I wasn't really hearing much on it. And then I kind of developed some things. And then I, 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 what I did a lot was drive around in my car, and that, that's kind of where I did a lot of my writing. And, and a lot of the big songs came from my freaking car. So I, and I still do that because it's a place where no one's going to bother me, and I can um, repeat the song as many times as I want. No one's going to listen to me. And I can throw out all the bad ideas. So um, I had I had this, the, the chorus for the song. Um, it just kind of popped into my head, kind of like they do. And luckily, I'm blessed with that. Uh, uh, ability somehow like my mom had uh, a little uh, a lot more talent than I did your I mom was rad I got like 1% of her talent she but anyway was rad. so writing the tune um, I, I was thinking about where the relationship I was in was headed and, and um, I wanted to put some meat on the bone as they say so I wanted to get some imagery in there like about TV shows or remote controls or you know the things you do with your, your significant other that like you just you're gonna miss after that's gone so um, when I originally came up with the chorus um, it was a whole octave higher and, um, was it really? Yeah, well, the, 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 the melody was supposed to go <laughs> instead of all the things that I want to do. Right. It, was, it was supposed to be <laughs> so it was like extremely too high. And so I, it sounded way too out of my range. So, um, but, the, but the melody was there. The, the, it, was, it was slightly, ch so I brought it down to all the things that I used to say, all the things that got in the way, all the things that I used to know have gone. So that's how it, we finally got the melody kind of wrangled in and, and it sat in the track more and it was a, a song that, you know, anyone could sing along to, which was good. And it still had the da 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 the repetitiveness that I was looking for in a hook. And um, the lyrics were pretty cool. So, um, you know, I don't know, that, that's how that came about. It just kind of spung, uh, you know, landed in my head, worked it out, changed the melody a little bit, and then kind of developed the lyrics accordingly. I love, I love that you mentioned your mom. Jan's mom was like, she had the talent, it feels to me like a throwback, like singing, dancing, like, do you think that's maybe where you get some of your musical Absolutely. DNA I mean, and talent? My and dad had zero musical talent, in fact. He used to tell us, uh, he'd come into the rehearsal studio and say, can you guys, do you know Far, Far Away? And we're like, what, well, no, what song is that? He goes, no, can you play Far, Far Away from here? Get out of here! Get out of here! Y'all suck! Who liked Engelbert Humperdinck? My mom. That was my mom. So my mom played piano. She played ukulele and guitar, and she sang. She got a vocal scholarship to college. I got one one thousandth of her talent, and I'm lucky to even had that. So no, but she was um, proud of you. You know what I mean? Like when in the fly video, that was fun. We put she, all the moms at the end of the video, and right? She would just. I mean, she answered questions in yeah. song form. She would go to the DMV and be singing. I mean, she was a, like a. It was a different sort of uh, attitude. She she was such a 
pleasant, happy woman, and I and I have to hand it to her. She uh, she got me through a lot of hard times. So thank you, Betty, for that. A lot of nice shout out. So anyway, so back to the tune, and so he comes up with that. We bring it to the studio. We were writing it. At this point, we had uh, we sort of all broke off, and I think for the self titled. We really kind of like started turning things in separately. We didn't live in the same house anymore. Don Gilmore produced this record, um, as you've heard in the other videos so far. And he, he was a great guy to come in and really make our band sound like a great rock band. And I love that. As like the nerdy, like music rock guy, I'm like, yeah, he like took pride in making Stan's drum sound incredible. My bass, the guitar. Listen to the guitar sounds in these songs. Anyways, but back to when it's over. So we're working with Don Gilmore, and as great as Don Gilmore is, and he's great, we sort of felt like when the song got finished in the studio, it needed that extra special rub. And so we actually had David Kahn come back in and do a remix of it for the record. Yeah, David Kahn's a musical genius. Um, <laughs> David Kahn was a, you know, it, it was one of those things too, where Don would put certain like, tonal guitars on there that weren't really, it was really kind of rock, but but yeah. um, we needed that David flavor, and um, and he certainly added it for this. There's sub basses going on. Special there's all sauce. This, there's all this special sauce. Loops and percussive stuff going on. If you really listen to the song in headphones, you'll know what we're talking about. But um, and it, and it just became a song. Everyone really like thought this was the follow up to uh, to someday, and and sure enough, it, I think it was a, I think it was top ten, maybe like maybe not not top five for sure, but I think in the top ten. So uh, we cracked the code again, and we definitely put the naysayers uh, away again after this record having another hit. So that that was kind of the uh, the last one where we needed to like shut everybody the hell up because you know after fly someday every morning. And when it's over, it's kind of like, all right, Sugar Ray, these guys can write some songs. So we were lucky for that. We're going to do it right now. Here's When It's Over. Let me see. On um, the self titled, number 41. <laughs> Baseline courtesy of Rodney, but this part right here is actually a keyboard bass that David put in. I mentioned that David did a lot of bitching, like sounds underneath. That's the time. And so live, I was actually live on play right here. And when you go, 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 it down, dude. Second verse, five. How much, you love me. how much did you have to do with writing the rest of the lyrics? I didn't write too many of the verse lyrics, Murph. You. you know, singer wrote those. I never knew uh, how much you meant to me. You know, it's just kind of like placeholder. Here you go. Then there's three chords as well. Kind of a whole long, hold the whole whole. Words that got in the way. You know, like each section. Is, yeah. Remember the bridge? Here comes the bridge. Yeah. All the favorites. I think coming up is Rodney's part of the video. Yeah, this is a breakdown. It's like a third verse breakdown. We never did yeah. three verses. That's kind of weird. And we always had weird choruses where you didn't. This one has a true chorus, but the other ones, you were like, where's your chorus in every morning? This is where Rodney fought uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar in the video. Go check out the video on YouTube, it's pretty insane. As an homage to Bruce Lee, his hero. Here comes the bridge. When it's over, can I still come over? Rhyming over with over. Huh. It works. Over. Yeah, I'm her. Is it really over? He's laying down. Yeah, I think I'm laying down. Okay. When it's over. Well, here, this is Mark's part of the video. The time I fall in love that's the Duran Duran. Here's my favorite part of the tune. If you listen closely, All things that I used to say. we got a counterpart, a vocal part. Away. It starts right here. There it is. All the things. Listen to it. Did you write that? Yeah. All the things that I used to know. It's like this. All these vocals are kind of swirling. 
swirling. And then, and then, as I say a lot, they fade it out. Yeah, but live, good. you had to figure out a way to end it, and so we just have to figure that out in pre-production, right? And we would end it when it's over with like an acapella exactly. thing. It was pretty right. fun back in the day to arrange that stuff, but it was hard because we had. I used to come out and play guitar on this song because we wanted the drum loops to be pumping through the speakers and the subwoofers right. to sound like the record. But we were talking about it earlier, Murphy and I, and we had to kind of. That was a kind of a tricky transition of us trying to figure out how to play these songs that we recorded and then we go out on the road and we're like, wait a minute, we added, you know, 400 loops underneath here and, and the bass lines change and the guitar parts are all twisted around. So how do, how do we sound good playing this live? So it would take us a while to figure that out, but we did it. And, um, you know, Homicide was always super great. He was such a great showman. I mean, he would... He would spin records, he would put in loops and samples, he would spit champagne Constant on everybody. Constant entertainment. He, he would throw yeah. shit at the crowd. I mean, he was just like the greatest. Right. He was such a clown back there. I, I would look back there half the time and he's like underneath his turntables, like, you know, drinking a beer. And well, you out. actually, you don't look back. You were side to side. Yeah, we were. It was like we were, a back yeah. line of Stan and Craig, which is so rad. Yeah, he was He was definitely, I, I would love to, to see him in his element. Like, he was just such a showman, so it was great to have him uh, in the band. That's for a sure. really good point. Um, and yeah, and, and like Stan said, we would go to Third Encore. Hey, Third Encore. We would always go there and we'd set up like before a tour, we do pre-production there, which means go and figure out what you recorded. And it wasn't, I mean, he's right. There was a lot of sounds on, on these songs. But it was also like the fact that a lot of these were dri uh, driven by Craig making a beat and not an acoustic drum set playing it. So we kind of wanted to have the integrity of it sounding like the record. But yet, how do we, okay, so how do we, we don't, and Stan, uh, you, you mentioned to me earlier, you said, it, I could play the beat, but it wouldn't sound exactly like the record. We wanted to represent that, but also how do you take the chorus to the next level? So early on, he came out playing guitar, and we just let Craig play the beat. But then we figured out, wait a minute, let's have Stan come out and like lift the chorus and play live. And there were parts too where I'd come out and play the guitar, throw the guitar to D-Rock or Robert. D-Rock, Robert. Then, and then run back to the kit and then play the chorus and then get the guitar. It was it was actually fun, man. It was like fun to be like a utility guy where I could go yeah, kind of pop around the stage. Yeah. And, and it, it kind of differentiated us from a lot of bands because a lot of bands have bass, gum, drums, guitar, and vocal, and that's it. Yeah. Like you, We kind of had a DJ. We had like... You know, personnel changes. You know, we had a bar on stage forever. We had our DJ Sleprock, who was our yeah. security guard. And, and, like, you know, he was part of our show. And our entourage was a bunch of, you know, crazy, crazy people who we love. And uh, made it a lot easier for us to tour and, and be out there and gone from our family. So thank you for uh, spending your time with us and lives with us. Hope you enjoy those Rolexes. I want to try to remember every tech we had, or as many as we can. Oh, Slep man. made my life easier on the road. Slap, really? So slap. George Nix. Oh, man. D Rock. Robert Ortiz. Yes. Rick French. <laughs> Rick French. What's up, Rick? I love you. Uh, there's so many to mention. I know. Bobby Johnson. Yes, Bobby. Um, yeah. Uh, we had so many freaking great guys. I'm forgetting every European. Single... Remember the European driver, the uh, bus driver? Oh yeah, G Ginger. What oh. about Biscuit? Our two. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We got Biscuit, a bus driver from Corn, because we right. Yeah. Yeah. He listened uh, to our three song cassette for eleven hours one wait, time. Wait, who was t the Tom, the baseball yep, guy? Good Remember man. Tom, the baseball guy? The, he he was like Tom. Ruiz, yes, the, yes. And then like oh, wait, I'm forgetting. Sean and all those guys went to Australia with us. Tim Wright. Tim Wright. <laughs> Tim Wright. <Rizzi. laughs> Anybody Terps. else? What about Terps. the what about the dude? Terps. What about the dude who uh, uh, him and I were up late one night on the way to Vegas? We both went to bed late. He didn't make it to bed. Remember that guy? Oh God, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Bobby Twitchell, R.I.P. Bobby Twitchell. Yeah, Remember Bobby him? T. Oh, Rat. 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 That's right. I was thinking about him. I'm like, where's Rat? Rat. Rat. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis. Something. Anyway, <laughs> I, I always do. And, and by the way, I'm, I'm sure we had so we're, many. We're great, forgetting a few wonderful people. Wonderful staff, and, and then, oh, Dave Lacursey, my God. Oh my gosh, David, Jesus, David Paul on Facebook. Dave. I always see. He always jumps on my Base Friday yep. posts, and I love you, David. Um, I mean, so so many great guys. The stories David gave us about uh, Daryl Hall on the remember in uh, Malaysia, yeah, and he told I mean, us about using the bathroom. Dave, I, I've been talking to you recently. Miss you, brother. You're you're amazing. Love you, Dave. Uh, Mike Stallone. Mike Stallone. Oh, go, go, go for Mike. Yeah. Stalingrad. <laughs> the birds. We're forgetting Mickey. Oh, yeah. Our European tech, Mickey. Thank if, you for your service. If we forgot anybody, I'm going to add you specifically to the next video. We can only remember so much in these old brains. Uh, I think somewhere in one of these videos, I said that 
your crew, or maybe it's a post I, I posted about, but you hear people say, oh, the crew is family. And you're like, yeah, really? Because you see bands and you, you never see the crew, but it's really, really true because when you're gone and you're out there, they're literally your best friends. It's really who you start a second family with. And so when people say that, you have to believe them. It's really true. Look at our expressions, freaking out of remembering these great people. And so everybody, we love you. And it was fun to do our life with you. And so back to you guys. Thanks for watching this When It's Over video. Um, Sugar Ray Songs in Order. I want to thank Stan for stopping by. It's been really fun. No! Keep watching Murph's, uh, you know, exploratory bass odyssey uh, video series. He's doing a great job. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, checking us out. Thanks for being fans. And uh, any more questions, direct them to uh, Murph as he plays the Vegas Blues as he takes us out. Wait, right. we got to do a bass slide to get out of here. Want to do a slide with yeah, me? Yeah, okay. Later. Bye. Okay, we're back and nothing changed. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, we changed instruments. <laughs> we specifically jumped back on because we forgot one person. And we didn't forget. It's just these minds, you know. It's like on the spot. Pete Rock, Pete Karras. Hair Wolf, Hair Weezy! Yeah. Dude, Pete Karras was a, like one of our very first techs. Um, and he just absolutely kicked ass. And he is the funniest dude and raddest drummer. So, Pete Karras, thank you for all your work. Um, Mike Savoya, of course, you weren't a tech Absolutely. for us, but you, you were so important he to us. He was part of the family. Mike yeah. was part of the family. Um, there's so many others that we're forgetting, but but uh, thanks for listening and, and checking us out, guys. Later. <laughs> Hold on, I got to say this. The greatest story I've ever... Pete's dad. We have to mention Pete's dad. Oh, yeah. In driving up our driveway at 100 Karras, miles an CAA. hour. Nick Harris, Pete's dad said the funniest thing. I don't know if I can give the punchline well, but can we set this up? We're just going to do it for Pete right now. Nick Nick Harris, remember we walked in the club? Yeah. Nick Harris, Sugar Ray, Pearl Jam. Yeah. <laughs> no, he said, did he say C Nick Harris, CA, Sugar Ray, the next Pearl Jam. <laughs> he said, we're the next Pearl Jam to get us into this club. And you know what? It fucking worked. We got in the club real quick. We got in there. We probably did shots. It was so fun. Right. But nobody knew who we were. They just took this old guy at his word that, like, I don't know what he said, but let him in. Nick Harris, CAA, I got Sugar Ray here with me. They're the next Pearl Jam. Let us in. I put online that Stan's going to be here, and I, I asked, do you have any comments, questions for Stan? So Christopher Lee, what's up, Christopher? He asked, ask him whose idea it was for the video, which is a classic, especially the Duran Duran Flock of Seagulls montage. How, is, how did the song came about? We kind of went through that. Because someone told me one guy was Sugar Ray. I think we'll just address the video question. Video was pretty easy. Uh, like our, our director at the time said, hey, what, what do you guys want the video to look like? And we all kind of wanted different things. And so he said, well, why don't we make a montage of all your favorite, um, like wh whatever you want in your, in your scene, we'll do it. So we basically built four sets. We spent half a million dollars and made this extravagant video. It's really funny. If you Google Sugar Ray when it's over music video, please go watch it. You'll laugh your ass off. It's really funny. But we had a really good, and then at the end, we broke into like our real life and we were riding scooters down at the yeah. beach and having a beach party at, at night in a concert. It was super fun. I crashed my Vespa, but we'll get into that later. And that's a question here. It was, I was holding up, it was a two day shoot. Uh, Marcus, what's up Marcus? Uh, Sweet Murph, ask him about Sugar Ray Golf putter head cover. What's up, Marcus? So this this is pretty easy. So uh, one of our friends, Troy Grant, he's a professional golfer, and he got us these killer up, uh, Sugar Ray putters. And they had these killer uh, head covers, and they were embroidered with our logo and everything, and I was super proud of it. One day at the golf course, I may or may not have had way too many beers, and uh, the golf <laughs> the club, uh, the cover of the, the putter head, it fell off, and it you know I lost it. And then someone else found the head cover, Put it on eBay. Somebody else found it, bought it for me, and mailed it back to me. So that's a pretty cool story. And thanks for uh, thanks for your questions. Debbie Jones, super fan. I love Debbie. Which was his favorite video to make? How the heck did he get so cool? These are questions for Stan. How long has he been a drummer? Tell him I said hey. Hey, hey, Debbie. So yeah, um, my favorite video to make, it, it, it was probably that one or Fly, actually. Fly was like the first one. We had our moms in the video. It was triumphant. It was a hit song. It was our first hit song. It was yeah. the number one song. So definitely, definitely fly. And uh, I've been playing drums since I was in like sixth grade, probably. And um, you know, I like long walks on the beach. I'm a Torres, and um, I like a nice deep back rub. That's weird. Troy Boyland, uh, Boyland. Do you mean the novelist? If so, how about Charles? If you were going to be inspired by a Sugar Ray song to write a novel, which song would it be? Wow. Uh, gosh, if I was going to be inspired by a novel to write a Sugar Ray song, what would that no, be? No, inspired by a Sugar Ray song to write a novel. 
Um, one of our tunes. I don't know. Maybe like Waiting. Waiting would be a good one. There you go. You know, waiting. There's your answer, Troy. There you go. Uh, bartender. Mr. Bartender, what's up? Did he purposely fall off the scooter at the end of the video? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Adrian? Um, you know what? No, that was a complete accident. I hit a patch of sand and I went, uh, you know, face down, t you know, you know, sprained my wrist and uh, it was totally accidental. I, I wish I, I would have been like a Chris Farley kind of guy and faked that thing, but it was real as hell. Check that replay out right here. Okay, uh, Don Bronze. Don Donnie. Bronze. What's up, dude? Flashback hot attack. Where's he get his pepperoni? <laughs> we use the Roni cups at Sergeant Pepperonis. They're a little bit more expensive, but they hold all that grease. So it's like a it's like a shot glass full of grease inside a pepperoni cup. Try it out. And William Defina, he just says hi. <laughs> What's up, Billy Boy? <laughs> Miss you, Will. 